I'm making this clock from four quarter cherry and I'm starting off by cutting out a 16 inch piece. This will be used for the sides. Because it's wide enough, I could rip this down to two pieces, 16 by three inches. I'm just freehanding the design here. I'm just using a compass and making a couple curves. You can do whatever you want, but to cut it out, I just simply took it over to the bandsaw to slowly cut out the shapes I made. And then afterwards I could clean it up just using a spindle sander. With my sides cut, I had to figure out the right clock face size, and since that has to be square, it dictates other parts, like the cross support, which I'm starting with here, just cut at 8 by 4 inches. And this is just going to fit on the bottom here. And then for the clock face, that's going to end up being 8 by 8, so all I'm doing is gluing up a bunch of parts here. Next I'm adding a top piece. This is going to stretch across the whole top, but it's going to overhang a little bit. So I'm cutting mine to 11 and a half by 4 inches. I'm also adding kind of a decorative top piece on, on top of that. And that's going to sit inward a little bit, so I'm cutting the piece for that to 9 and a half by 4 inches. Once again, I'm freehanding the design using the compass. And in the end, I think I maybe could have made this a little shorter instead of 4 inches. But just like before, I'm just cutting this out on the bandsaw since it's purely a lot of curves. Before going any further, I like to sand down all of the parts using 80 and 120 grit. And then I'm using my router table to add a fancy edge to a few of the parts, just using a Roman OG bit. And you can see I added it to the two top pieces the clock face, and the cross support. Next I tried something I've never done before. I tried carving my logo on the cross support piece, just using this little craft Dremel tool. And then after that, I thought I'd try something else new, wood burning, which I've also never done. I thought it would be fun just to try burning in kind of like a fun camping scene in the clock face instead of buying a metal clock face and numbers. Next it's time to glue everything together and what I'm starting off first here is with the clock face and just getting that glued in place to the sides and then I'm gluing in the cross support here. Now I'm not strengthening any of this up with screws or dowels but if you want that would be a great choice to make it even stronger. I'm simply gluing it together. Now to finish it off, I'm adding a 5 16 inch hole in the center of the clock face for the clock hardware that I bought. And then to finish it, I'm simply using an oil-based polyurethane. And once this finish is dry, I can add the clock components and it's all set to be used.